Shall we get into some Ronald Jones, some Rojo? Old Rojo can go. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're excited about some... Uh, yeah. Th- this this guy, when I first started watching everything, well, you know, my I watch all this stuff and I, I go through it all. And my first run through was I didn't really know what to make of him. But I basically came to the conclusion that I just... It's everything just feels so effortless. Like yeah. I couldn't really put my finger on what was going on there. I didn't know if I loved him or hated him or what was going on. Yeah. Um, and then the second time through, it was just like that there it's so effortless. He just kind of glides through things. And, and I, I just, I really enjoy watching this guy uh, play football. So that was a tough call between him and carry on. But like I said, I thought carry on was, you know, kind of a little more, uh, insulated like he didn't need a whole lot of great landing spots not that really ronald jones needs a great situation because i do believe this guy's a game changer um and and, and can do a little bit of everything he's a little smaller six foot 200 pounds obviously went to usc so those those dudes are always bringing in solid skill position players he was ended up fifth in uh rush tds with 19 on the year and eighth in yards with 1550 which is you know a solid day and that against uh, not a super impressive USC offensive line no not by any means um <clears throat> and you said he's he's not the biggest dude he's only 200 pounds but he did add 10 pounds of muscle over the off season from 16 to 17 so you really like you really like that um I thought that he did look a little bit bigger um and you, and you see him it shows it shows on the field you see him running through arm tackles yeah uh you can see you can see it on a run where he gets his body pulled in different directions but like he, he's never losing track of he's never he's never getting pushed off of his kind of track that he's yeah, on. on his yeah basically on his line he stays you know right, right. on that thing and it's those it's those like marlon mack type tackles where they're trying to you know, they're pulling trying to grab onto something or, because he was there and gone in an instant right and 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 sometimes you see a guy go down early with contact and he doesn't he's not that guy he's fending off weak attempts at tackling yeah. him and he he just needs a crease too right yes yeah, seriously like that's you know the first one of the first things that you notice is just like all this dude needs is like a, a sliver of light and and he's he's gone like he's got really solid speed and uh it's it's pretty impressive watching this guy do his thing i i, I do for only being 200 pounds, which, you know, some people he's going to get knocked for being like a little bit of a kind of tweener in size, I guess you could call him. Um, but what I really liked when, when you really get in and, and, and look at what's going on, I think he gets his pad levels down pretty low when he's running through that kind of line of scrimmage, which, you know, he uses his leverage well, which provides some power to go along with his game here, which is something that, you know, some of these got some of these maybe smaller backs don't really possess or don't understand how to use. I think he kind of gets all that. And I think the power thing is a little underrated in his game. He's pretty strong through the line of scrimmage, through tackles and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I like his ability to grind it through the tackles. Like he, he's oh, a quick, he's a tweener. There's no way he can grind it through the tackles. I mean, he's 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 quick decision. Like he can, he knows when to cut his losses. He's not going to dance behind the line of scrimmage, and and he gets that pad level low, and he can grind out two or three yards. Like and and that's. Like when there's no doubt, Marlon Mack would have bounced it outside. Yeah. He cuts his losses and gets low and gets you two or three yards. That's like it's the two to three yard runs that I really want to see from a true running back. Right. And, and when you can get me those yards and fall forward and cut your losses, yeah, and get those yards, that's what I really like. And then when you add that to the his ability to take it to the house on almost, any given play, at will, he's got tons of long touchdowns uh, to, on his repertoire, both catching and receiving the ball. You're kind of holding your breath like every single touch that he has, especially if you're the opposing team. You're just trying to get a piece of part of this guy to bring him down. And yeah. It's usually not, you know, you got to get a hold of him to bring him down. He's not just like one of these smaller guys where you can grab him and sling him down to the ground. He knows what he's doing out there. He knows how to use his body well. Right. And and he's got a nice mixture of patience behind the line of scrimmage. But if he sees a lane and it doesn't even have to be a big lane, like there's no hesitation and he's at full speed. Yeah. Very fast. Vision is pretty good. Vision solid. I think he operates really well in tight space. Like he he doesn't doesn't get a. Uh, He's hard to tackle. Right. He doesn't get like. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he he doesn't get all uh, kind of willy nilly there. Like yeah. when, when things tighten down on him, he's really good operating in like a in a in a really tight space and, and inside of a box basically. Mm-hmm. And and like you said, all he needs is a, a really a really slight crease to really take that thing to the to the end zone and the start stop is is right another i saw thing that really just stands out from you he's up to speed really quick and he can stop on a dime 
I saw several times where a guy would have him one on one and try and square him up, and he just sidesteps him right and like, keeps it moving with ease. Uh, tackle breaking machine. I, I really like that. Um, I like the fact that you know he can obviously get the outside, but but if he does get you outside, he's probably going to cut it right. back in because he sees more yards. Than he's he not had always inside. looking for it, right? Like he just doesn't want to get to the outside and run down the sideline. He doesn't mind contact. It doesn't seem, and and I think he he does well with it. It's not like he's an easy tackle, like we've been saying for a couple minutes now. Yeah, right. Uh, looking at the the Texas game, he was he was getting stuffed a lot in the in the back behind the line of scrimmage that that Texas run D was playing its tail off. But on the last play of the half. There's a little bit of a broken play, and Darnold hits him down the field on that busted play, and now he's in. He's got the ball in the open field. He immediately makes one dude miss, like dude falls down trying to tackle him. He cuts direction, gets another good block, and then accelerates past everyone for the long touchdown. Yeah, and it's like those on a busted play when you can make me pay, and and you've been struggling all day to get something going. Right, that's what you're looking for, and they score right. Like it's a, literally was a last last play of the half. And uh, you know, he just I like a guy that can that can give me the tough two to three yards, but can also make me pay yeah. from a mistake, you know, make that defense pay. I think he like I mentioned, I think he kind he kind of he's a little bit of like like a glider, like really buttery smooth in his in his movements. It's never like right. chopped up. It's always working towards getting back up field and, and getting going in that in that uh getting that long speed. Uh but it doesn't take long for him to get up to speed and that's that's you know the best part about this guy is, is is how quick he is he is ready to go and and that all kind of funnels into just needing the slightest of a of a little crease to really go the distance here and and I think that's what you're what you're after in in your Ronald Jones seeking the the reason being that maybe he's a little behind Carry on Johnson and maybe some people have him even further back is the size and and you're worried about maybe the versatility I think he was pretty uh criminally underused in the passing game I think this guy yeah, he only be... had 39 receptions. No, that was 30, 30, sorry, sorry, 39 touchdowns, 31 receptions right. in his career. And it's 7, 11, and 13 throughout the career, which is, you know, I think this guy can really accelerate in the passing game. He's great in space, but he doesn't necessarily need to be in space. Some of these younger guys or smaller guys need to be in the space to be great. He doesn't need that, I don't think. No, I'm with you. Um it also should be noted uh, this awesome senior or sorry junior year that he had. Um, he did deal with an injury on his own. He, he um, injured his ankle in practice after their third game, missed the game against Cal. Um, watching that Washington State game that he came back with, uh, I didn't read this anywhere, but the commentator said that he also had a thigh contusion um, that he picked up. So you know he was able to play through all that. He only missed one game and and really crushed it the rest of the year. I mean, there's some ridiculous numbers here looking at his game log. Yeah, I mean, he's averaged his whole career pretty much over six yards a carry. This year he was just under at 5.9, but 6.5 his freshman year, 6.1 his uh, junior year, or sophomore year, and then 5.9 uh, this year. And he's obviously forgoing his senior year um, at yeah. USC. And then when you look at the at, at, at his, his game log and you look at all the different long columns of long receptions and long touchdowns, I mean, it's like, or long rushes, 37, 23, 86, 67, 52, a bunch of 20s, another 56-yard reception, 33-yard reception. He's a big play waiting to happen. Yeah. And, and he can grind it out for me, I think. And he's willing to put on – he put on some muscle, and it didn't affect his play. He might could even put on a little bit more. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah went to go and, and had to compare him to Jamal Charles, which Daniel Jeremiah is constantly throwing around Loves like, the strong comps. comps. Like, yeah. he compared carry on to Le'Veon. Yeah. And uh, he's ready to just put his stamp on all these dudes, and, and maybe it's not but quite it's, Jamal Charles. But anytime you're a smaller dude, you're going to get paired right. compared to that kind of guy. And and Jamal Charles was a similar kind of guy where, like, you know, you you would it would be two, three yards, two, three yards, and then boom, day was made right. on a huge play because you're not catching him from behind. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, I, I I like this guy in the two or three yard category, and I sure. like I like him uh, in in pretty much most facets of the game. I think he can kind of do. A little bit of everything, especially for his size. I mean, some people don't feel the same way, but that's kind of what I what I got on him. Yeah, I'm good to go, man. Let's let's draft some Ronald Jones. Give me him. Well, let's take it to break, and uh, we'll be back on the other side with some more rookie running backs. 